Okay. Like I was saying, is uh, this presentation is Nivis, Near Vertical Incident Skywave. Um, I, like I said, I do have one on display out here. It's a little fancy, uh, but I was doing some more homework today. And you'll see that one out there strung out rather taut and straight. I found out today you don't even need to do that. Um, the guy showed, he literally just threw the antenna on the ground. It looked like a snake on both ends of the, of the uh, banana clip, and it worked without a reflector or anything. Now, I've got a reflector on there. I'll touch on that in the presentation, the reasoning behind it. You don't need one. Just have the proper cut uh, um, wavelength of what uh, wire you want for what uh, band you're going to work on, primarily 40, 60, and 80, but you can do 20. Um, tune it up, and you're good to go. Um, I'll show. I'll, I won't say any more. I'll just go straight to the presentation. This can cover different um, bands, um, different frequencies because of, of its ability to, to do whatever you cut it to. I put 40 meter because that's what I have out there. So with that, let's see here. What is a Nivis antenna? Nivis is an acronym for Near Vertical Incident Skyway. It is an antenna that has a quite a history with military use. This is due to the Nivis antenna's attributes of being portable, easy to set up and take down, effective in mountainous areas, and will make reliable contacts from 30 to 40, 400 miles away with 100 watts or less. I'm going to throw a caveat in there. That's a bold-faced lie. Jim and I strung one out on field day out here. We just haphazardly threw one together. The first contact we made was in California, so it blows away the 400 miles. <laughs> but we also set up um, one... Mar what were we, what's that park over here? Mariah. Mariah. Um, uh, Jim and I threw one up, and that was haphazard out there. Between vehicles and the little marshy area, we threw it up, and we hit Lee and Jay, and they were 20-something miles away yeah. on 20 or 40 meters. So, and I'll, I'll explain the reasoning behind that here in just a bit. Um, so, I, it's just a pun. 300, 30 to 400, you can reach a heck of a lot more if, if you don't do what you're supposed to, which we did. Although there are several de designs, many Nivis antennas are simply dipole antennas deployed horizontally or as slopers at an elevation less than one quarter wavelength above the ground. In addition, the Nivis may or may not include wires on the ground surface working as reflecting elements. Um, I was playing with these months ago and uh, they work without a reflector and all that reflector is is another piece of wire which is approximately 5% longer than your radiating element. Um, you, you don't need it. It will work, but it's a lot better with one. So how does Nivis work? Due to design, the Nivis antenna transmits radio waves vertically, 75 to 90 degrees. They make reference sometimes to it being called the cloud burner. It goes straight up. And there's I'll show you one of the pictures, beauty of that uh, feature. Uh, 75 to 90 degrees from Earth's surface to the ionosphere where they are reflected back to Earth in a circular pattern around the antenna. The propagation is for those frequencies that are most likely to be reflected by the ionosphere, specifically frequencies from 1.8 to 8 megahertz. Frequencies above 8 megahertz become less likely to be reflected and frequencies above 30 megahertz have little or no reflectivity. Due to the reflectivity, Nivis antennas typically use 40 meters at daytime and 80 meters for nighttime. The circular red radiation pattern resembles an upside down half grapefruit and is sometimes referred to as a cloud warmer. Since this pattern is circular, signal strength is fairly equal transmission in all directions and directing your signal is not required and topography, hills and valleys, have little effect on transmission. These antennas will shoot that, that uh, Way, uh, that uh, transmission into the sky and it'll come down off of the ionosphere. And there's another beauty to this uh, little antenna. Um, you can't be tracked. I.e., I'm going to use the Ukraine and Russia where they were zeroing in on people on the radio transmissions on 40 meters before Elon Musk stepped in and gave them free internet. Um, they can find, they can fox hunt that signal where it's coming from. With this little uh, antenna, it's going straight up. 
and then coming down and saturating that half of a grapefruit all around. There's no, they can't determine where it's coming from. Just pretty cool feature. Uh. That's my favorite one. So why would you want a Nivis antenna? Nivis antenna is very portable. I roll mine up on a, a paper towel roll, the cardboard roll, put the whole thing on there. I'm done. A Nivis antenna can e be easily set up by one person. It does not require trees or extensive supports, i.e. masts. So a Nivis antenna can be set up almost anywhere on the ground that is level. Kind of, sort of. It doesn't have to be level. It doesn't have, like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be straight and taut. It just needs to be cut and tuned. And if you've got it cut correctly and it's tuned, then you've got this 40 meter Nivis that goes with that radio and it never changes because you didn't change the length of that antenna. Nivis allows you to make reliable contacts from 30 to 40, 400 miles away, and it does. The Nivis antenna, due to its proximity to the ground, reception is fairly quiet and free of noise. Tonight, um, we had discovered, Excel told us we got some stray voltage out here on some of these wires. And when Jim and I had set up the one here in the road on field day, it, the noise level, you couldn't see it. You couldn't find it. <laughs> it wasn't there. I put this one up today and it's closer and my radio, I can just hear that thing just ticking away from the, the scratch coming off of those wires so there's straight voltage. But um, another thing, and I'll show in a diagram here in a little bit, I've got, in fact, uh, let me just shut up and keep going here because I'll give away the farm. Let's see here, because of all these characteristics, the Nivis makes a great emergency HF antenna or simply an antenna you can take with you for a field operation or when camping. Please be aware, the Nivis is not a DX antenna. This antenna system was developed for reliable communications within 400 miles with 100 watts or less. I made it red because you can reach a heck of a lot farther than 400 miles. So you want to build a 40 meter Nivis antenna. Start with cutting the radiating and reflecting elements. I t had a, a 250 foot roll of 26 gauge wire I get on Amazon for 20 bucks. B and Tech Go. Real nice silicone coated. Doesn't get tangled up and stuff. Real tiny. Radiating element will be a dipole that is half wavelength for the frequency. In this case, I cut a 67 foot length of 26 gauge wire. Then I cut it in half. Then I joined it uh, with a banana, dual ba uh, banana clip post. You've seen them. They got, it has B and C connector on one end and the red and black knobs on the, uh, on the top. The wire can be trimmed to be resonant on 40 meters in this case. And of course, your antenna analyzer is recommended to get it trimmed appropriately. Reflectors, that which is below the radiating element, were made to the same 26 gauge wire. The wire will need to be a trim to approximately 73 to 75 feet in length. It must be longer than the radiator. Um, and I say here, 73 to 75 feet in length. If anyone wants one, I've got a calculator that will do all of that for you. An Excel spreadsheet that will sit there and give you what you need uh, for your measurements to cut your radiator, cut your radiating uh, element, all that good stuff. Reflector, there we go. Bonus. If you've got that, uh, that reflector underneath it, your antenna impedance will be 50 ohms as long as you're cut the, proper, the, the correct length. Without it, you're less than 50% efficiency without a reflector. You lose a lot. A lot. Um, and then your patterns are unpredictable. Uh, there's no telling where that they're going to be going. But with a reflector, they are going to go straight up. Uh, with the uh, the wire the way it's, it, it is uh, directed and it's just going to go straight up and come back down whereas if you don't all your signal could be going here to the southwest you know so you cut out everybody else and here is just a little quick diagram is your nivis as you can see it comes up at a higher angle obviously at 75 degrees and doesn't reach out as far as dx for obvious reasons it's going up at too steep an angle. Um, this one down here with the green uh, post, uh, Nivis antenna, that's pretty fancy. And they got a bunch of reflector wires. I, I would never do that. I'd just use one. Um, I've got mine positioned on a tripod in the middle for today. But normally we used uh, driveway markers, the orange 
fiberglass markers. That's all I use to run that wire and underneath it the uh, reflector. And then you got some folks that will take, now they got a pack 10 on one to one bow and it doesn't, you don't even need that. Um, kind of like a, I guess you'd say a, a fan dipole, but a fan nivis antenna. You can put three or four, you know, cuts of different wire lengths on there for your different 20, 40, 60, 80 meters, whatever you want to do. You'd have to match the uh, corresponding length of the reflectors. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So with that said, questions? Give them to Randy. <laughs> but I got here. Let me go see real quick. I hope I did. Um, While you're doing that, can I ask how much separation do you need between the reflector and the reflector? Give me just a sec. Can't, think, can't click and think twice at the same time. There we go. Okay, I'm sorry, what now? What kind of separation should you have between the reflector and the ribbon? Here is a picture, and I, I will sh my spreadsheet does that for you automatically. It uh, tells you. As you can see, 0.15 um, wavelength separation between the two. My eyes aren't that good. Yeah. Well... <laughs> So if you got, you got a 40-meter antenna, right, does that mean you have to go 40 feet up? Put it, put it this way. This one out here, and as Jim and I have done in the past, we just strung them out. It, it, we didn't do, oh, it needs to be 37 feet, 3 inches. We just put this one here. In fact, I think that one was on two tripods and supported in the middle, and then we just tightened up our reflector at the bottom about... I, don't even, I think it was laying on the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, it was laying on the ground. It, none of this is cut in stone, but if you want to get precise and take your time to do it, shoot, there's nothing wrong. I took my time out here today, but it is not 40 meters. I think it was optimally needs to be like 35 feet in the air, your uh, 18, your antenna wire. And uh, nah, I ain't doing that. Um, let's see here. So here, this is this is what I've used is these driveway markers. Now it looks kind of like what we did at Mariah. We just strung it out there, and you can see here the the propagation is. It can't be located because look what it's doing. It is going all over the place. It's saturating that umbrella look, that half a grapefruit, um, and it will get in the nooks and crannies, especially if folks on the other end are running Nivis as well. They're running Nivis, man, you'll be talking like telephone quality. What if they're not? It'll still work because we used it at Mariah. We could pull in Lee and uh, Jay, and they were on whatever wire or verticals. Wire. You know, it, it works. And this is the banana clip post. You get two of them on Amazon for seven bucks. <laughs> get you the dead gum. Uh, 250 foot roll, you can make two antennas easily with reflectors. And like I say, I, I, I'll roll this one up. It'll be on a cardboard roll coming out of a paper towel, and that's all you need to carry with you. You can then take that wire. You don't even need any posts. If you got two trees on each end, get you some paracord or what have you and just stretch it out to the trees. Do the same with your uh, reflector and hook up your antenna, your coax. You're good to go. That's what the beauty of this was. Is, um, they were, this is, was used extensively in Afghanistan in those mountain regions. The GIs out there could just throw down two pieces of wire, and I don't know if they still use prick 20s or not, but they could just throw that wire out and they could talk to whomever and couldn't be found as they were speaking. So, that's that, and then... This is the calculimitator. If you want a copy of this thing, email me, ku5mc at w0sv.club, and I'll send this thing to you. And all you do is you put in your frequency that you want, and it will do all the grunt work for you. Tell you 65 feet. Uh, it didn't make it? Oh, because I closed the browser. I'm sorry. Picture, but it, doesn't help it, ain't, it ain't mine. I wouldn't have that. That's ugly. <laughs> I thought those were all reflectors. 
<laughs> what did they call a radio ball? Hey, can you tune that one up? Yeah. Yep. That's Rick's backyard. Okay, let's see. Is it going to? Nope, it's going to stay at tab. Yeah, muddy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being recorded. Sorry. Give me a sec. It's the other one. Like I say, in this instance here, uh, you just change your frequency. If you were going to use an end fed cut or 40, say, you might want one radiating, radiating element cut for 45% over. And if you wanted to use it both for 40 and 20, cut 220 uh, reflectors, 5% over. I do have a reflector on the ground, but it's not directly under the under the antenna itself, or, you know, the radiator. If you wanted to say you wanted to work more west coast than east coast, you can pull that out and kind of point it a little bit that way. It'll it'll take that nivis and move it slightly. Off topic from this, I have found out you can take with a Wolf River coil with a vertical antenna. Yep. If you've got your um, radials, yep. um, I cut 15, I forget what, it, what, what length, I'd have to look it up. 15 of them, I think they're like 8 feet, yeah, 98 inches I think each, 15 of them. You can make a dead gum vertical with the woofer coil directional. And I take those 15 radios and I put them on one quarter or one third, so to speak, of the sweep. And that's where that radio, that uh, transmission will go. Wow. Is it doing the direction of the radios or in the opposite direction? The, the, the direction of the radios. That's the woofer of a coil. It's almost like a mag loop, except it doesn't have a loop. And there's... I saw others, I haven't implemented this one yet, but they take the Wolf River coil with, I believe, a 102 inch whip, and they've got it up on a tripod to get it up off the ground, and they have two 16 foot, is that what comes with them? Uh, uh, 33, two 33 foot radials going in this, so to speak, this direction, and that's where all your transmission and reception comes from. And it's up off the ground, it's not laying on the ground. So you just keep it up off the ground, and it's directional. So if you want this thing, uh, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, I love messing with these things. I live in an apartment. I am in a parking lot surrounded by three three-story apartments, um, multi-vehicle garage, and garages on either other end. So I'm surrounded by metal. But I can take this little puppy, and my neighbors already, they already know. Oh, Rick's out there. <laughs> and uh, 
I can hear cars coming down the driveway. Whoa, whoa. And then, whoa. But this just works in, the, in my garage. I say in my garage, outside of my garage. I sit there and play FT8 and JS8 call, all that good stuff. Um, and if it don't, so be it. But this pulls the signals in and out. That's it. Any questions? Yeah, there's there's one I have strung out here. I just like I said, I disconnected the coax, um, and you'll see it's just a, the banana post clip, two wires, and then one longer wire. That's it. That's that's the antenna. Just sit there and wrap it up, and you can put it in your pocket and go. I'd encourage you to go and take a look. If nothing more than to see the the way that it's put together. Thank you. And, it, and, and once again, it goes back to what Jim said when we do POTUS. You can go out here and take a look, see at it, and you're going to go, wait, I can do this. That's the beauty of going to see, you know, go look at something. And like the POTUS, we go out there and we look at these things and go, hey, I can do that. Uh, we have an issue with 17-foot antennas, and I got one coming in tomorrow. By the way, uh, Wolf River Coil has them for 60 bucks. I don't know what wrong, went wrong, and I'm not complaining, but somehow I ordered that 17-footer, and it was 53 bucks, And it's going to be here tomorrow in three days. So if you want one. That's what the price was. Okay, because he's got 60 up there, and it, it came, it's going to be UPS. It's here in three days. But we had issues, a lot of us. I, I broke mine. I broke both of them, the 102-inch and the 17-footer. Um, somebody came up with an ingenious idea how to keep them dead gum things from tipping over. Yes. So it's just, just well, he says he's going to patent it. But anyway. <laughs> Who would ever tip one over? Well, well, you didn't. You just let the wind blow yours over. <laughs> 17 foot of steel up there in the air can tip over quick. But Randy came up with a collar and three tie downs that slips right over it. Stake it in or sandbag it. She won't go nowhere. Guess what I did? I was out in the garage. I was piddling in the driveway. Yep. And uh, well, actually, I hired a little guy. He comes out there and he just holds it for me. His name is Chad. <laughs> He's already got the callus. <laughs> so that's it. If y'all want to, I'll go out there with you. You can take a look, see at it. I'll bring a flashlight. <laughs>